Hi, I'm Carolyn. And I'm Zach. And this is our 1992, 1992 Toyota, Toyota Hilux, Hilux Galaxy. Galaxy. Woo! And that's Willie. And that's Willie. Come on. This is actually our second day with the Galaxy, um, but we got it in last night. So yesterday was uh, kind of crazy mode of suddenly all of our neighbors came over and were looking at the Galaxy with us. Everybody wanted to see it. <laughs> um, but yeah, we were kind of on cloud nine yesterday. We actually ate pizza in the Hilux um, and then promptly went to bed at like 9 p.m. because we were exhausted. But we did throw the plates on and take it for a test drive around. We did. And, and that was, I, definitely takes getting used to. Yeah, how do, we, how do we do? Well, I was kind of all over the road. I stalled it once. <laughs> Only once. Shout out to Jamie and Danny over at Van Life Northwest. They're out of Portland, Oregon. They specialize in importing JDMs, fixing them up, and finding them a new home. Yep. Um, this one was kind of unique. We got in touch with him before he actually even posted this up for sale. And uh, kind of jumped on it. Flew out to Portland, Oregon about two weeks ago. Checked it out for a few hours and kind of flew back. It was a quick trip. Yeah, we were so excited. Yes. Super, super excited um, is... to really see this thing. It's like our new toy. This is our new toy. Before we really go through everything and even change anything, we wanted to just kind of display what it's like when we first originally get this. So everything's in Japanese, everything doesn't make sense. So we're just gonna fumble around and try to figure this out and press buttons and figure out what they do. Yeah, so come along with us. Uh, you wanna show us the outside? I'll show us the inside. Sure. Let's do it. Okay, 1992 Toyota Hilux Galaxy, built on the LN106 chassis, 1992. So this is essentially the Toyota pickup that we had here in the States with a few small differences. I guess one of them is that this is a right-hand drive, five-speed diesel, little four-cylinder, uh, about 2.9 liter diesel engine. It's a 3L engine. Um, but yeah, it looks like the old 4Runner, an old pickup. Um, so as you can see here, it's pretty clean. It only has like 60,000 miles on it. If you look underneath, one of the first things that you'll notice is that it has a solid front axle. It doesn't have ind independent front suspension. This has the solid front axle. It has manual locking hubs for the full wheel drive. Um, so old school, purely mechanical. Um, coming around the side, one of the most obvious features that really stand out. Check out these cheeks. Yeah, so they're just like riveted on, sealed up. And I'm assuming it has something to do with aerodynamics, but uh not like it really matters. But anyway, so coming around the side, we got doors and windows galore. Got antennas all over this thing. This is a VHF, UHF antenna, very high frequency, ultra high frequency. Sliding window goes um, driver's side to passenger side. These slide open, which is pretty nice for the, uh, for the cab over sleeper. Got some vents here. These are for the refrigerator that's on the inside. This here is uh, the generator, the 09 generator, runs on the gasoline. Separate gas tank on the other side. We've got a nice awning here. Um, that works. I played around with it once. A bunch of Japanese stickers, Yoshikawa. Whatever EPL stands for. Um, so yeah, you got the drop down stuff over here. Oh, I skipped the, uh, the obvious thing that one of the bigger things that we're going to talk about. The dualies, okay? So uh, these are 15 inch, these are uh, 15 on six. You can sell the outside is five though, but technically there's a stamping on here. It says 15 by six, made in the USA, uh, November 20th, 1991. Um, which is kind of interesting how the rims, the, the steel wheels are built in the USA. Just kind of discovered that this morning. Um, through much investigative work through Carolyn, we discovered that this did have the rear axle recall 
uh, taken care of out in Japan. Um, so we'll do a very big deep dive on that because that was one of the most nerve-wracking crazy things that we had to uh, figure out when we decided to make this purchase. So anyways, yeah, it's got the dualies, airbags, uh, you can kind of level them independently, um, which is pretty nice. Or just lift it up and give yourself plenty of ground clearance. Mm -hmm. All right, so coming around the back, just kind of zip tied our license plate up there for quick for now. Um, yeah, this drops down, carry firewood on it, or bikes, bike rack, ladder to get up to the roof. Get a nice, massive backup camera. Um, the license plate holes don't match up. They're a little too wide for us right now, so which is why I zip tied it. Couldn't wait. Zip tied them up. Took this thing out for a spin yesterday. Really fun. Um, yeah, some other cool things. Japanese Recreational Vehicle Association. How cool is that? Western Outdoor Leisure Club. Sounds awesome. Yeah, uh, it looks really cool. So coming around on this side, you want to come around. This side's kind of bare and barren, but um, without opening this up, this has a this has the AC compressor for the uh, for the air. Um, very small compressor. This has um, the cassette. Or I think this has the compressor. I'm not 100 percent sure yet. I got to open these up. But this is the cassette for the toilet black water tank for the toilet, open this up, slide it right out, dump it in a porta potty or public toilet, whatever. Clean it out, slide it right back in. Um, we have here, uh, this is the shore power. Um, the guys at Van Life swapped this out because it had, uh, obviously, there's compatibi compatibility issues with basically everything in this thing when it comes from Japan. Um, not designed for 120 at 60 hertz. Everything's designed for, I think, 100 at 50 hertz or 110 at 50 hertz. So, some quirkiness there, but things that in general should work. Um, potable water. The potable water, the something else. I think this is the diesel tank. This is the diesel fuel. There's keys on everything, so I'm not gonna mess around with that waste of time. But yeah, you can see there's compartments all over the place. Keys all over the place. This is gonna drive us nuts, but we'll learn. We'll learn, kind of tweak things out. Uh, we got some spigots here. This is a hot water spigot. Comes right out. It's pretty hot if the engine's running. Oh, the hot water gets heated from the engine, which is pretty cool. You only have to run it for like 10 minutes. And this thing, you can cook tea with it. Um, comes out piping hot. Piping hot. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. It works pretty nice. And then we have another one, fresh water. But yeah, as you can see, um, it's pretty clean. It has a, a giant massive hood up top uh, for the for the in-cab air conditioning. And that's like its sole purpose. So I'm kind of leaning towards, um, I'm kind of biased on this already and I feel like I'm gonna take it out. Um, but we'll mess around with it for the, for the time being and we'll see how we like it, how we don't like it maybe take the 120 pounds off the roof or whatever that thing weighs and throw in a pan. We don't know yet. Okay, so yeah, pop in the hood. We're gonna spend a lot of time figuring out. There's a lot of different systems in here. A lot of wires that just go to places and it's gonna take a long time to just figure everything out. What's been done, because a lot of stuff is just done aftermarket throughout the years. But um, yeah, the guys over at Van Life, they went through this engine completely. Uh, timing belt, water pump, all new hoses. Um, they really went through and just kind of really dialed this thing in. Um, I believe they threw a new battery, new starting interstate battery. We have another another battery in here that's kind of used for, uh, for all the stuff on the inside, all the lights and stuff. Um, but I believe both of these get charged through the alternator on here. Um, I've been told that's kind of be, that's going to be basically uh, step one for me is I'm, I'm going to have to look on eBay and kind of import an alternator because a lot of the stuff that's specific to the engine is going to be hard to come by if anything were to go wrong. I'm going to carry around a couple of the more common items that I think we might need just to have them on hand in case anything were to go wrong. 
come on in. So first thing you see, or actually I'll get out. First thing you see, we got nice Recaro seats. These are actually really nice seats. Um, pretty basic in here. We got some carpeting down here. We got some really cool classic, uh, I don't know what these are, koi fish? Koi fish floral arrangement. Um, coming into the inside. We got a uh, pretty basic. We got a uh, racing steering wheel, um, aftermarket Alpine speaker, um, but we have all the gauges, everything. So all the instrument cl clusters are in uh, are in kilometers an hour. So when you go in like whatever it is, 40 miles an hour, whatever the trend, it, it shows that you're going 60. But yeah, we got this big honking reverse tube TV or CRT TV, little 12 volt thing. Um, we've got a battery voltage aftermarket cluster up here. Shows our, our voltage, even though we have a battery thing over here. This also monitors it. Um, your pretty basic dash. I think this was, what I, I don't know what kind of trim model they, ca they called it, but um, a little sticker fell off of the little gear knob here. TRD, standard shift, shift volume here. Uh, we have airbags, airbags, independent suspensions right here through the through the inside one. Okay, so we'll see. Uh, we'll check out the inside, but first, check out these aggressive rain guards. It takes up half the window. I've never seen a more aggressive rain guard. All right, you've seen the outside. Now let's check out the inside of the camper as it is. Uh, so yeah, let's head in. All right, first of all, we have this nice step to get us inside. Um, there used to be carpets here. Uh, no longer any carpets. Uh, we took those out as soon as Zach went and saw it out in Portland because they were pretty old and gross. Um, as you can see, this is a full fiberglass shell. Um, so there's no wood subfloor. There's no wood at all, which is uh, really nice and desirable about the galaxy in particular. Uh, because wood rots, um, fiberglass doesn't. Fiberglass lasts. So that was really appealing to us when we made the purchase. Willie is already making himself at home on our kitchen table. So uh, like you saw in the cab, we have this nice koi fish fabric. Um, it's a bit dirty. We're thinking about maybe replacing it, but what's nice is it, it at least zippers. So we can at the very least uh, put this through the wash and at least deal with it for a little while but we're thinking later on maybe some sort of sunbrella fabric or something that will last for a while um, otherwise come on in check it out so the size is perfect especially for two adults and a dog we have the kitchenette area um, a nice sliding table that i won't show you right now because it's a little bit broken um, but this does turn into its own bed, so we're gonna have to experiment with that, see if this is the bed we like to sleep on, or if it's gonna be up here, the above the cab bed. Um, this is the one that makes the most sense. The biggest downside is Zach is tall. Zach's about 6'2". Um, he does have to kind of duck down when he's in here, so uh, we'll make it work. Like I said, it's not the biggest camper, but that was really the draw for us, is we don't need anything big. Um, we kind of want the van life experience and this already being built out and uh, taking such good advantage of cabin space, um, really good advantage of storage space. It makes a lot of sense. So even though this is older than Zach and I both, uh, they did a really good job planning this out. Um, so like Zach said, we have the sliding windows over here. We also have some windows right in the front. They don't open. Um, we don't really need them, but they're there. They're nice view if we are laying up there reading a book or something. These also come out so we can get some more room in the cab if we want to, if we want Willie to kind of have some space to overlook us and, and watch the road with us. Um, yeah, so there's a lot uh, we can do here. We do have an air purifier, uh, which important to note, um, we've done some history check on the vehicle. It looks like the last time this was driven at least a thousand kilometers was back in 2016. Other than that, it really hasn't been driven since maybe the early 2000s or the 90s. So this has been sitting for a long time. And when we opened it up, it did smell super musty, which is why we have a nice candle going right here, which actually has helped a ton. 
So this air purifier, while I 100% understand why somebody put this in here, will probably go because of how old it is. Um, but we're looking for ways to experiment to really get the must out of here. We're going to do some digging, do some cleaning. If anybody has some really good tips for getting the musty smell out of your camper, you let us know. Um, otherwise, everything's in really good shape. There are some nicks here and there. Um, just a little bit of like remnants of rust around the side of the sink that the, that can be taken care of. But otherwise, again, for a vehicle and a cabin that was made about 29 years ago, it's in really, really good shape. We have the water back here. Um, we have the nice splash guard over the built-in uh, burners, which is nice for that extra space over here. Um, and again, fan right here. So nice ventilation. We have some good sliding windows. Uh, nice to get some circulation here. Like Zach said earlier, this is our air conditioner. So I haven't seen this fired up yet. Um, it's interesting. It's nice to have an air conditioner, but we're really going to have to see how well this works. We're going to have to test it out if we really, really need it because it is um, a good amount of weight and it might be more efficient just to have a big fan here. Um, and the big fan acting with a small fan in the bathroom that you'll see in a minute. Uh, might just be the right move to get some air circulation in here. So we'll, we'll test it out. Otherwise, we have some speakers. Uh, we have a light. Um, lots of nice little lights around here. Uh, we'll have to replace the bulbs, but it's definitely nice when we had our pizza out here last night. It was nice and bright and super cozy. Back here in the kitchen, again, lots of storage space. Uh, something weird that is particular or like specific about this camper is whoever owned it for us put this vinyl on here um, and we don't like it at all. It's uh, not in great condition. Um, we don't know why they did that, but we're gonna do our best to take the vinyl off and use some sort of adhesive remover to try to uh, get the wood back into the shape that it was before because it is good, high quality wood and, and we want it to shine. <laughs> um, we have this toaster oven slash microwave that we're gonna have to play around with. Again, this is an all Japanese, so we're going to have to do some experimenting to figure out what any of this means. Um, but it does work and super nice for when we're on the road. Uh, back over here, uh, again, storage space and over here, um, I call this storage space because right now there's a TV here, but we by no means need this. Uh, Zach and I use a projector, a nice small portable projector when we go camping, um, when we use the Sienna, even in our own house. So we really don't have a use for this, um, but we might hold on to it because we don't have a VCR player uh, and it's kind of nice for like some of the old home videos and stuff like that. But yeah, this is definitely a relic. Um, and if that wasn't enough, we have a whole other one. Mm -hmm. So this definitely must have been aftermarket. Um, somebody really liked their entertainment, maybe had some kids that slept back here and wanted this for them. Um, and again, it's actually really nice. These seats have seat belts, so you can um, strap a few kids in the back or your friends, strap them to the table, and you know what? They can entertain themselves while Zach drives. Strap them to the table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back here strapped to the table watching TV. Long road trip. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Uh, some privacy curtains over here. Honestly, all these curtains are going to have to get replaced. Uh, these ones aren't so bad. We do have um, ways that they kind of just come down and they do the job. It's fine. Uh, this, But these are definitely not the curtains that this fan was made with, so I don't know what happened to those curtains over time. Um, but these definitely aren't the best quality. They might be a source of the musty smell. Um, these curtains back here, it looks like somebody did these by hand and they were literally just like ripped into curtains. So they work for now, but definitely something we're gonna wanna replace. Um, and kind of going off of like what we will replace, time will definitely tell. We've been playing around with the idea of doing a new build out in here, um, kind of just making it our own. But in the meantime, everything in here does work. So we're gonna start by just chipping away at the comfort things, like maybe the new cushions, definitely getting this stuff off, giving it a good clean, uh, new curtains, and kind of just taking it from there.
Um, so the bathroom is great. Door is here. Uh, we also have a curtain um, and a window back here. There's a fan, there's a light, um, the bathroom, the sink, uh, the, the shower uh, thing comes right out, so you just use it yourself. Um, we do have a mirror over here, which I enjoy. Uh, nice comfort to have on the road. And there's actually a little wardrobe in here. Um, and it has a nice little uh, line that you can hang things on. But lots of, lots of storage space in here to make good use of. And finally, we have uh, this door. So if you do want to kind of close this area in, thinking maybe um, a spot to like close Willie in, uh, if we want to give him a smaller, like more comfortable, cozy space, that's somewhere that, that we can make use of. Um, but there is that little door. So two doors back there, but it works. And I could go through each and every storage space, but there is a lot of interesting stuff back here. Um, ways to make use of things. We'll get creative, but overall there's a lot to explore in here. I cannot wait for our first weekend trip in this and, and just to start figuring out what we like, what we don't like, where we're going to put things, um, what we're going to take out, what we're going to put in. And uh, yeah, it's pretty great. We're super excited and we do want to document everything we do along the way. So hopefully you'll come along with us and have a look at what we do and if you have any advice any feedback any questions just let us know Bye. Bye.